This is a seven English podcast, and you're listening to my house of horrors. Chapter 291, New Three Star Mission. I missed the only chance to save her. The old man kept his head lowered with he spoke. His words were filled with guilt and regret. After some time, he continued. I visited them again after one month to see whether they had found the girl. I knocked on the door for a long time, but there was no answer. I walked to the side of the hut and saw that the window had been shattered. I stood on my tiptoes and glanced through the window. The girl's mother was collapsed by the window, and one of her hands was gripping the edge of the window. She seemed like she was trying to escape, but the room was built like a prison. The window was too small for her to fit through. I grabbed the hoe to smash the lock on the wooden door. The father had built a sturdy house, and I needed to knock several times before the door fell open. There was a faded stench inside the room, and the tables and chairs were all tipped over. The father was lying beside the door, and there was a deep scratch mark gouged into the door. It must have been painful for him. I called the police and the ambulance. When I was about to run back to the village to call for help, the door to the hut next door suddenly opened. It was the Zhu family's second daughter. She walked out obediently from the house. Seeing the key in her pocket, I was reminded of the fact that the door was locked from the outside. This place was so isolated that normal people wouldn't come here, and the villagers gave the family a wide berth, so no one would come to poison them for no reason and lock them inside the hut. There was only one possibility, the killer had to be the daughter. Suddenly, looking at the young girl, it felt like I could not recognize her anymore. Perhaps she saw her future in her sister, so she was just trying to protect herself. After all, the little girl had been born with a not-so-noticeable abnormality. However, a scarier thing happened. When the girl saw me, she did not panic or show fear. She walked over like normal. She raised her beautiful face and looked so innocent, but the words that left her lips still chill me to this day. She said them with a flat tone without any emotion. She told me that her sister had been buried inside the peach plantation several weeks ago, and she hoped that I would help her find her sister. I wanted to tell her, after one was buried in the ground, they were dead already. I tried to explain the concept of death to her, but she just smiled happily at me. She told me, after we die, we would change into something else, and her sister actually hadn't left. The old man gripped his hands tightly. Thinking back to the day, his forehead still broke out in cold sweat. I didn't know how to communicate with the child so I ran back to the village alone to call a few young men to guard the perimeter of the plantation while we waited for the police to arrive. Then there was a long investigation. I told the police there might be a body buried in the plantation, but the police couldn't find Zhu Shinro. They tried to use the little girl as an opening, but she refused to speak. It was as if she had turned mute overnight. Due to my guilt toward Zhu Shinro, I didn't expose her sister. Furthermore, from how I see it, their parents got what they deserve. There was a bitterness in the old man's voice. The couple always hit their children, and when the escapees from Coffin Village wanted to execute Zhu Shinro, they not only did not stop them but even gave their silent approval. If not for the people from by family village, a tragedy would have happened a long time ago. Other than the little girl, you're the biggest suspect, right? Didn't the police say anything to you? Chingu was calm. The case was as he expected. I tried to hide the little girl, but the police were not so easily fooled. They managed to discover many things from the little clues, and I believe that one of them by the name of Yen seemed to have figured out everything. However, he did not point it out. The old man looked at the coffin and reminisced about the past. He was not that interested in the poison case but showed more interest in Coffin Village. After giving my statement, I was free to go. The girl was taken away by the police and I moved to the city to live with my son. However, whenever night came, I could hear Zhu Shinro's voice crying, Save me, save me. I asked my son and daughter-in-law, but they claimed that they didn't hear anything. It was normal for the two adults, but my grandson who had just started kindergarten would point at the bottom of his bed or the cupboard and yell, Spider! Spider! We ransacked the house but could not find any spiders. I suspected it had something to do with Zhu Shinro, so I bought the peach plantation and moved here. My aim is to find Zhu Shinro's body. I'm old now, 
with a few years ahead of me. I only have two wishes left in my life. One is the safety of my family, and the other is to find Zhu Shinro. The old man held the black jacket and stood beside the coffin. He seemed to be ready. His voice lowered like he was talking to himself. Whether she can be found or not, at least this coffin can be put into good use already. Old master, don't be that pessimistic. Now that we know the exact location of the burial site, we can report to the police tomorrow. Digging for body would disrupt the crime scene, so Chenggu wanted to leave that to the police. That's fine but I wanted to go and check. When the poison case happened, I told the police there is a body inside the plantation, but they couldn't find it. I'm afraid of an accident. The old man grabbed the lamp and the hoe. You have a point. The rain outside had receded. Chingu grabbed his backpack and followed the old man to the largest tree that was at the middle of the plantation. They dug around it for a long time but could not find Zhu Xinro's body. This shouldn't be. Chengu believed Zhu Xinro had no reason to lie to him. After all, he only wanted to help her. Sai, looks like it's not here either. There was a thick disappointment in the old man's voice. Wait a minute. Chengu looked at the decaying tree and he retrieved the hammer from his bag to smash at the trunk. The trunk wasn't that thick to begin with, and it shook from the force. The roots are dead, the trunk might be hollow. The two worked together to loosen the soil around the roots, and then pushed the trunk down. Underneath the cluster of roots was a hole filled with spider's webs, and through it was something that looked like a woman's legs. This is it! Ju Shinro was buried headfirst, and the peach tree sealed off her body. Save me. When the body was found, Chinji's black phone vibrated. He took several steps back to look at the message. Congratulations, Spectre's favored. You've triggered the trial mission for a three-star scenario, Coffin Village. The scenario is extremely dangerous. Please decide whether to accept the mission within a week. My House of Horrors. Chapter 292, A Miracle Draw? The night rain slipped through his collar and chilled Shinji's skin. He stood at the fringe of the plantation and stared at the message on his phone. In the slot where he could choose the trial missions, there was a new option, Coffin Village. A three-star scenario is still too difficult for me. The third sick hall is also a three-star scenario. Without Zhangya, I would have died then. Since the difficulty was three-star, this meant that the scenario possibly had more than one red specter. Based on the information Chingu had, the only source of threat to a red specter was another red specter. The trial missions given by the black phone are more than just a mission. I need to consider the other variables both in real life and in the future. I cannot rush into this, Chingu hesitated. Well, I have a week to think. Perhaps Zhang Ye will wake up in a few days. If that happens, I will not hesitate to take the mission. He came to the decision and glanced at his shadow before shoving the phone into his pocket. I'll decide in five days. Coffin Village was a new choice, but ultimately, it was a choice. Based on the accident revolving around Jiang Ling and Zhu Xinro, Chen Gu had a feeling that this three-star mission would be as dangerous as Third Sick Hall. The key problem was that the village at the foot of the hill was called Lin Guan Village, but the mission venue given by the Black Phone was called Coffin Village. Based on what the old man had told him, Chen Gu suspected that the real mission venue was that mysterious village hidden in the depths of the mountain. After unlocking such a scenario, it would be a real attraction at the haunted house. After all, there were not that many haunted houses that used an abandoned haunted village as the theme. Once unlocked, it would attract many new visitors. To be honest, Chen Gu was intrigued. However, he was also cautious. Coffin Village was situated deep in the mountain, not near anything. The place probably would not have telephone signal. If something dangerous happened to him then, seeking escape alone would be difficult. The villagers of Coffin Village are born with abnormalities, and each family prepares a living coffin. This place is probably hiding plenty of monsters. Those who escaped to buy family village looked normal, but their attitude toward those with abnormalities was curious. It was like they wanted to kill all of them. Why did these people escape from the mountains? Was it really because of an epidemic? Chen Gu could not understand why, but he was certain of one thing. 
Before entering Coffin Village, he needed to make friends with Jiang Ling. The girl was definitely not as innocent as she looked. Both Yin Xiao Xiao and Fan Yu seem to like me. Perhaps I'm more natural around children than adults. It shouldn't be too hard to make friends with Jian Ling. The peach trees rustled in the dark. The old man used the hoe to pry the hole underneath the tree open. His motion was soft, and guilt hung on his face. Chen Gu wanted to help but was rejected by the old man. He removed his jacket and hung it over an overhanging branch like he was trying to keep the body from being ruined by the rain. The old man moved the soil away, and the female body started to slide. When Chen Gu saw the small arms that grew under her normal arm, he did not feel so good. She was born into this body, so why did the people around her fault her for it? Chen Gu thought back to Zhu Xinro's childhood that the old man had described. No matter the weather, she would need to be wrapped up tightly, and when her abnormality was discovered, she had to face the bullying and mockery from people around her, and she had to apologize to them for something that she could not control. She must have loved the winter when she was young. When he saw Zhu Xinro's full body, the shock could not be described by words. However, compared to disgust and isolation, what Chen Gu felt was pity. He had seen many monsters and many people who had seen many monsters, so he could see it from a more subjective perspective. It's not your fault. Chen Gu stood facing the wind to block the rain that threatened to pour into the hole. Suddenly the black phone in his pants vibrated again. He took it out, and the black phone said the affection Zhu Shinro had for him increased from stranger to slightly favorable opinion. When I first saw Xiao Xiao, that was how she thought about me. Looks like this one also won't attack me for no reason. Without a taxi, Leaving the isolated Lin Guan village in the middle of the night was difficult, but Chen Gu already had a plan. At 3.15 a.m., the police arrived at the scene. As the one who found the body, Chen Gu requested to follow the police to the station to give his statement. At 5.30 p.m., Master Bai and Chen Gu were in Inspector Li's office. Compared to the nervous Master Bai, Chen Gu was more relaxed. He even managed to get some shut eye in the police car. Master Bai, just tell the truth, don't be afraid. Our Jiujiang's police are the best of the best. They will not purposely make things difficult for you. When Inspector Li walked into the room, Chen Gu was trying to teach the old man how to face the police like he was an experienced master. Inspector Li did not even know how to react. This kid looks more and more like our informant as the days go by. Uncle San Bao. Chen Gu stood up when he saw Inspector Li. Tonight, we'll trouble you again. The police's work is never done, isn't it? The old man beside him nodded. He was an honest man. He realized that they had reported the case in the middle of the night, and the police officers had trekked into the mountain before daylight. They were indeed hardworking. Thank you for all the trouble you've gone through, sir. It's our job. Inspector Li told Master Bai with a smile, then he turned toward Chen Gu. Jiu Jiang is so big. Can you please wander out of our district once in a while? I beg you to leave the district for holiday. Give yourself a break and give us a break. Inspector Lee, you're so nice to me. Don't worry, my body can still stand it. Inspector Lee looked at Chen Gu and wanted to stand up to smack him, but since an outsider was there, he held it in. Inspector Lee rubbed his temples, and after taking their statements, he hastily called De Yong to lead Chen Gu out. De Yong, who had dark circles under his eyes, walked Chen Gu to the door. He gripped Chen Ji's shoulder as he said, Brother, Inspector Li is a straight shooter, don't mind him. But if you don't feel like going on a holiday, how about staying home to relax for a few days? De Yong sounded sincere. He was really looking out for Chen Gu. Accepting the kindness from Western Jiujiang's police station, Chen Gu nodded and replied with sincerity. Okay, I'll try my best. Chen Gu jumped into a taxi and returned to New Century Park. The sun was just climbing over the horizon. Staring at the sun, standing before the haunted house, Chen Gu suddenly took out the black phone. I remember the effect of lucky draw during midday is not so good. They say a good morning is a good start to everything. Perhaps I might be lucky if I initiate the lucky draw now. Chen Gu thought about and spent 100 screams to spin the wheel of misfortune. My House of Horrors Chapter 293, Drawer Sunlight fell on his face as Chen Gu stared at the phone screen. When the spinning needle slowed down, his heart tightened. 
100 screams was not a small number. If he won something useless from the lucky draw, it would have been such a waste. I purposely picked early morning to do the draw. It shouldn't be a baleful specter this time. Just from the perspective of probability, it's time for me to see what other things the wheel has to offer, right? Chin Gu could not remember the last time he had been so nervous. His heart rose with anticipation while he kept his eyes on the phone. It stopped. Lucky spin completed. Congratulations for having won a rare special item. The drawer that cannot be opened. Chance of winning. 1 slash 100. When he saw the message, Chin Gu sucked in a cold breath. A series of nouns appeared in his mind. Curse love letter, crying tape, drawer that cannot be opened. They sound like they are from the same series. Chin Gu continued to read. I felt like someone was watching me. He was probably hiding in this room. I searched all the corners that someone could hide in, but I could not find him. I grew afraid. Whenever I worked at the table with my back facing the living room, the feeling of being watched returned. He was spying on me. I was so afraid that he would sneak to stand behind me when I was not looking. To save myself, I hid a knife inside the desk drawer. One night, the feeling of being watched reappeared. I couldn't wait any longer and pulled the drawer open to grab the knife. But when the drawer was pulled open, I realized the man wasn't hiding in the living room. Congratulations, Spectre's favored. You've won another rare Baleful Spectre. Warning! If you win five Baleful Spectres from the Wheel of Misfortune, your title will be upgraded. The morning breeze touched his face, and the sun was warm. Chingu slowly moved his gaze away from the screen. Why is it a drawer this time? When Chingu saw the name of the reward, he knew it was a Baleful Spectre. He had spun the wheel four times already and won three Spectres. His title would be upgraded soon based on his luck. I have a feeling I won't be seeing anything else in the wheel. Then again, how is a drawer going to help me fight the Ghost Stories Society? Chingu felt like he needed a bigger backpack. The probability of drawing Zhang Ye's love letter was 1 in 1000, and this drawer was 1 in 100. It should be weaker than Zhang Ye but slightly more powerful than Su Yin. It's at least a rare item, which is better than nothing. Chin Gu ran into the props room. When he earned any reward from the wheel, the item would appear inside the wooden box that his parents had left behind. Chin Gu kept the box inside the props room. However, Chin Gu searched for a long time but he could not locate that drawer that could not be opened. Could the black phone be referring to the actual drawers inside the props room? He pulled open the drawer one by one and found a rental notice in one of them. Room 304, Jiujiang 3rd Hospital Staff Residence. Room model, two bedrooms, one living room, one bathroom. A brand new home. Upscale furniture. 46 inch LED television. Large sofa. Wooden floor. Can move in immediately. Rental, 900 per month. Phone number. Chingu was made confused by the string of exclamation marks that were used on the flyer. Two bedrooms and one living room. The location is not bad. Normally, it should cost 3,000 per month, so why is it so cheap? The notice looked old like it was from several years back, but even so, it should not cost 900 per month. There's something fishy about this room. It's probably haunted. Although Chin Gu could not find the drawer, he did find this notice. Chin Gu understood what the black phone was trying to say. This new friend requires me to go find him personally. Chin Gu leaned the hammer against the wall. He looked at the time. I can take a half an hour nap before the park opens at 9 a.m. In the afternoon, I'll go to Jiu Jiang's children's home to visit Fan Yu and Jiang Ling. On the way home, I'll go deal with the drawer. After changing his clothes, Chin Gu prepared to feed the white cat. He tried to use the cat food as bait to train the white cat to find the food itself. He tried for a long time, and he came to the conclusion that taking care of Xiao Xiao and the pen spirit was more convenient. Since I can't train the white cat to look for its food on its own, perhaps I should train Xiao Xiao to feed it. Chin Gu rustled Xiao Xiao's head and suddenly felt like there were many abilities of his current employees that he had not yet discovered. The haunted house opened at 9 a.m., and the number of visitors was obviously bigger than before. Director Luo's promotional tactic was good, 
but Chengu believed that the power of his haunted house played a bigger part. To match the promotion, New Century Park had made a lot of adjustments. One could purchase tickets online, and the visitors could also share the link on social media to enjoy a greater discount. After the discount, New Century Park's ticket did not cost much anymore. This meant that those who had tried one-star scenarios before invited their friend to challenge harder scenarios. After all, visiting a haunted house alone was a vastly different experience to visiting with friends. With the growing popularity, there were guides to Qingji's haunted house appearing online. The number who cleared the two-star scenarios increased, but none of them had a perfect clear. The highest record was held by a group of students from Jiujiang Medical University and normal visitors. Twelve of them worked together to find 21 name tags in 20 minutes. It was to Qingji's regret that when one group finally gathered to challenge a three-star scenario, the third sick hall, they swiftly retreated when Qingu opened the door and they saw the mattresses that littered the corridor like mass graves. Some visitors are already challenging the third sick hall. Looks like I need to unlock a new scenario soon. Qingu finally got time to rest when the park closed at 6 p.m. After Su Wan left, Qingu grabbed the rental notice and left New Century Park. He stopped at a supermarket to purchase a bunch of snacks and toys before arriving at Jiujiang's children's home. The president thought Qingu finally decided to bring Fan Yu away, so he came out personally to welcome Qingu. Of course, he was disappointed by the result. Qingu carried the bunch of snacks into Fan Yu and Jiang Ling's room. The two kids, who did not know that he was going to visit them, were drawing quietly in the room. My House of Horrors Chapter 294 Fan Yu's Warning Red and black were still the only colors on the paper. Fan Yu's style had not changed. This is the room we're living in, and your sister was lying there at the time. Fan Yu's finger moved on the painting. It passed several black people before stopping at a black window. The nurse looked at Fan Yu's drawing, and she was confused. She was standing near the window, so if Fan Yu was right, the spider-like humanoid monster was just above her head. Ling Ling, let's go back to the room to play, okay? The nurse squatted down and moved her gaze away from Fan Yu's drawing. Her rational mind told her that Fan Yu was drawing those things from his imagination, but the more she looked at it, the more unsettled she became, as if there was a real monster beside her. No wonder many mental doctors fall ill with psychological issues. After extended interaction with these abnormal patients, their worldview will slowly be twisted as well. The nurse told herself that the source of her fear was her brain playing tricks on her. She tried to hug the little girl away, but the girl struggled. She did not want to leave Fan Yu's side. Let me, you should not be so rough with kids. Chingu placed the toys and snacks on the table before reaching for Jiang Ling's small hand. I'm rough. The nurse stood to the side with a speechless expression. I just think daily exposure to these scary drawings will have a negative effect on Jiang Ling's growth, so I'm trying to lead her away. Understood. Taking care of children is not easy. Chingu looked confident and mature. There was an indescribable warmth in his smile. The nurse glanced at him before turning her head away with a harumph. Even so, her gaze would drift back to Chingu occasionally. Jiang Ling, I've met your sister, Chingu said directly. He did not treat Jiang Ling as a little kid. I just came back from Lenguan village, and I've gained a new understanding of what happened to you and your sister. After some time, I'll go deep into the mountains to Coffin village to investigate the truth. The girl stopped crying when she heard the terms Lin Guan Village and Coffin Village. Her watery eyes seemed to be conveying a special emotion. It appeared like fear and shock. Neither of them spoke, and the room suddenly turned quiet. The nurse grumbled to herself. What is this man doing? Coffin? Investigation? Why did he start playing along? There has to be a limit. Don't lie to children. To the nurse's surprise, Jiang Ling who had been crying, suddenly reached out her hand to grab Chen Ji's collar. Don't go. Is it very dangerous there? Based on what Master Bai had said, Jiang Ling also had some slight abnormality. Similar to her big sister, Jiang Ling was that village's seed and probably knew some secrets about it. Yes. The girl nodded obediently. My mother said that the village has many things similar to big sister, but they're very bad. Similar to your sister? What else did your mother say? 
Don't touch the coffin. Jiangling's left hand tightened, and her right hand held onto Qin Ji's collar tightly. Don't go. You won't return if you go. I know. Qin Gu tussled Jiangling's head. He picked her up from the floor and placed her on the chair. The girl did not resist. What are you two talking about? Afraid that Qin Gu would say more weird things, the nurse immediately snatched Jiangling away. This time, Jiangling did not make a fuss, but before they left, she kept her eyes on Qin Gu. Don't touch the coffin. This is quite crucial information. Qin Gu closed the door and sat beside Fan Yu. Fan Yu had started his second picture. There was a black man who stood in the middle, and around him were plenty flying red shadows. Fan Yu, would you like to move to my haunted house? Qin Gu peeled open the bag of snacks and started eating. Fan Yu put his pencil down and turned to look at Qin Gu before nodding seriously. After I deal with this issue, I'll come and fetch you, but I need you to promise me a few things. Qin Gu leaned closer to Fan Yu. I know that you have no psychological issue, and the reason you're acting so strange is because you have an ability that others don't. Actually, in comparison, you're much smarter and more mature than people your age. I will not force you to go seek psychiatric help or medication. I just need you to do one thing for me. What? Fan Yu raised his head. I will enroll you into a normal school and give you a life similar to other children. I don't ask that you score in class, but I hope you can make a friend your own age and walk out of the enclosed world that you've built for yourself. Chen Gu was being sincere. When he made this decision, he had already prepared the money required to start Fan Yu's schooling. He was not one to splurge, but some expenses were necessary. Fan Yu did not reply. He lowered his head and started on his third drawing. Think about it. Qin Gu looked at Fan Yu's drawings but did not force him to decide. Also, one last piece of advice. Stop looking like the world owes you money. You have to learn how to smile, like me. Do you know why I'm so popular? It's because of my winning smile. The expressionless Fan Yu finally got tired of Qin Ji's blabbering. He shoved his latest drawing into Qin Ji's hands. He then lay down in bed and used the quilt to cover his face. This kid, Qin Gu shook his head and looked at the drawing. He had thought that Fan Yu was just doodling, but Qin Gu could not move his eyes away when he saw what the drawing was. There was a little girl drawn in black standing in the middle of the drawing. Behind the girl was a large red spider monster. This was similar to what Fan Yu had drawn earlier, but after a closer look, Qin Gu realized that there was a pair of crying red shadows twined around the girl's left and right hands. They appeared to be her parents. Is this a warning from Fan Yu? Qin Gu pocketed the drawing. He looked at the boy who hid himself under the quilt and sighed. He picked up his backpack and left the children's home. The girl is not as she appears. Qin Gu called for a taxi and gave the address on the rental notice. After taking this drawer, I'll need to rest for the night. He called the phone number given by the notice, but the number had already been disconnected. Since he could not contact the person who issued the flyer, he had to visit the place personally. Third hospital staff residence was part of the old city. The place had low population, and the buildings were generally low. Qin Gu found the place at around 9 p.m. The area was quiet, and most of the streetlights were not functioning. My House of Horrors Chapter 295 Disappearing Arm Third hospital staff residents looked old and battered. There was not even a guard post. Qin Gu glanced at the rooms on the first floor and realized that none of the rooms there had a room number. The rental notice only stated room 304. How am I supposed to find it? Qin Gu stood at the entrance holding the backpack. He wanted to find someone to ask for direction. Ten minutes later, a high schooler entered the area on an e-bike. Hello, do you mind telling which building room 304 is in? Qin Gu spoke when he was quite far away. He did not want to spook the kid. Room 304? That sounds familiar. The high schooler stopped the bike and pointed toward the residential area. Should be somewhere inside, I'm not sure. I have another question if you don't mind. Has any weird stuff happened in this residential area before? Chen Gu tried to make himself look as friendly as possible. After all, the electrical plant's residence is as old as this place, but theirs is livelier and more exciting. 
I don't think so. The kid looked at Chingu guardedly, thinking that the man was weird. Yawn! Who are you talking to? A middle-aged woman's voice came down from the third floor. Chingu turned to look and saw a woman in pajamas looking at Chingu with caution and waving for the high schooler to come home. Coming. The high schooler pushed off and quickly left. Wait a minute! Chingu did not want to miss this opportunity. He was there to take the drawer, so he did not want to make things so complicated. He then yelled at the lady upstairs. Sister, do you know which building has room 304? He shouted that once, but after that, all the lights in the building switched off simultaneously. Is it that serious? Only the middle-aged woman's home had its lights on. Walk down there. The third floor of the first building on your left. The lady's face was dark, and when she returned to her own home, the light was turned off as well. What is with this reaction? Chingu did not leave instantly but quietly tailed the high schooler. The kid, who did not know anything, parked his bike and went up the stairs. Mom, what are we having tonight? The kid was opening the door when the middle-aged woman could be heard yelling. Don't touch the door. Stomp your feet on the ground before coming in. Mom, what are you saying? I just came back from a long study session, and I'm tired. Stop arguing with your mom. The woman's voice suddenly turned up like she was incredibly angry. It shocked Chingu, who was hiding on the second floor. The kid followed the order unwillingly. Then the woman opened the door, her lips mumbling. The child doesn't know anything. Please forgive him. She repeated it several times before allowing the kid to enter the room. Remove your clothes. I'll wash them for you. But just I changed this morning. No dinner if you don't change. The door on the third floor slowly closed. Chingu walked out from the stairwell, thinking to himself, what's with the people at this place? The chance of winning the draw was 1 in 100. Su Yin's was 3 in 100, so technically speaking, the drawer was just slightly stronger than Su Yin. However, it should not be a red specter. So be it. I need to get the thing before night falls. Probably due to his shout earlier, the number of rooms with their lights on had decreased dramatically. Chin Gu found the building that the woman mentioned and did not sense anything weird when he stepped into it. The place looked old and had been abandoned for a long time already. He came to the third floor, and there were two adjacent rooms. Neither of them had a room number, but the one of the left had a contact number pasted on the door. Is this room 304? Chingu took out his phone to call the number. It only rang twice before it was picked up. Thank you for calling Eju Real Estate. How can we help you? It's like this. I'm interested in a room you're renting in third hospital staff residence. I'm in the area, so if it's not too much trouble, can I look at the place tonight? Please wait a minute. I'll ask our agent who is responsible for that area. After a while, the reply came. He just got off from work but I've reported your situation to him. He's currently heading your way. This is his number. Thank you. Around 10 minutes later, a man in a black shirt, holding a suitcase, stopped outside the building. He looked around 30 and very friendly. This is such a coincidence. My home is nearby. If you want to look anywhere else, you'd have had to wait until tomorrow. Sounds like fate if you asked me. Chingu chuckled thinking about how he could shuttle the drawer away without the man noticing. How about we go take a look at the room? Sure. The man was obviously scared, looking at the darkened stairwell, but he did not show it on his face. Come with me. He took out his phone to use as a flashlight and started his sales pitch. This area is not bad. It has plenty of nearby amenities like a hospital, school, library, and so on. Plus, the price is cheap. He took out a cluster of keys when they reached the third floor. With the aid of Yin-Yang vision, chun Gu realized that every key was taped with a number. The man prepared to use the key to room 305. Is this room 304? chun Gu asked. Hearing that, the keys almost fell from the man's fingers. He turned to laugh drilly at chun Gu. This is room 305. Room 304 is haunted, so how could we? I want room 304. I don't mind its history as long as the price is right. Bring me to room 304, Chingu said firmly. 
The man gripped the key to room 304, but he did not dare open the door. The stalemate continued for a long time before he moved to the door with a saddened face. If I knew you're interested in room 304, I wouldn't have come. He pushed the key into the door. The price for room 304 is half of room 305, but I have to tell you some things just in case you complain to me later. What is it? Chingu focused. He had a feeling that he had won an unusual drawer. The first tenant of room 304 was a gambler. He put the house on sale to clear the debt that he owed the loan sharks, but it was not enough. In the end, the man jumped out from the window of his room and died. That's the cause of it being haunted. When I tell you the truth, you won't want to rent this place anymore. The man pushed the door open. He committed suicide after midnight. When the police arrived, they realized that one of his arms had been chopped off, but even now, no one knows where the missing arm is. This is a 7 English podcast, and you're listening to My House of Horrors. Chapter 296 You want to scare me? If it was just a suicide, it would not have been so scary, but the dead man's detached arm still had not been found. No one dared move in. What if an arm poked out at them when they were cleaning the place? I still want to take a look, Chingu said calmly, like this was nothing serious to him. Okay. There was a patch on the back of the man's shirt that was wet, drenched by cold sweat. Actually, this place is not bad. The same model at Electrical Plant's residence is four times the price. After the door opened, a weird stench flew out. It smelled like mildew. The man tried the light in the living room, but perhaps because it had not been used for a long time, he had to work for it for some time before the light came on. The light banished the darkness and seeped into the room. Chingu walked into the room. He did not want to do anything extra. His purpose was to look for that drawer. The black phone provided a description of the drawer. It sounds like it belongs to the desk in the bedroom. Before the man standing at the door could stop him, Chingu had already entered the bedroom. However, he searched both bedrooms, but there was no table, only a large dresser. The description is different to what's described by the phone. Chingu walked out from the bedroom and glanced at the agent with confusion. Brother, are you sure this is room 304? That is what it says on the key. It can't be mistaken. The man showed Chingu the key. There was no desk in the bedroom, but there were tables in the other areas of the place. It'll take time for me to go through them. Will I really need to stay here tonight? What do you think of the room? We can still discuss the price. The man was afraid. He stood at the door and did not dare enter. I like this room a lot. Can you let me stay here for a night? Chingu reached into his backpack to search for something. A stayover? We don't provide that service. If you're not satisfied, how about we look at the room next door? There's no need. I want this one. Chingu interrupted the man. He took out his ID and 500 from his bag. 500 for one night, and this is my ID. I will not destroy anything in the house. If nothing weird happens tonight, I'll take this place. The agent had not seen this kind of customer before. I'm sorry, but the company has rules that I need to follow. Are many people asking for this place? If you don't sell it to me, this room will remain vacant for who knows how long. Chingu finally managed to persuade the man to give him the key. There are security cameras around the residential area. If you need help, just run out. I'll be back tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. You'd better come sooner because I have something else to do in the morning. Chingu sent the agent out. Looking at the key in his hand, he felt something was off. The key itself was old, but the tape was new. This is weird. A sound in the kitchen interrupted his thought. He took out the hammer from his backpack. Chingu walked into the kitchen and saw that the cleaver on the chopping block had fallen into the sink. Where was this cleaver earlier? He picked up the cleaver to take a look. Then he opened the gas stove. Holding the wooden handle, he seared the cleaver. Baleful specters should be afraid of fire, right? The bright knife was burned until it was charred. Chingu then dropped it back into the sink. There are so many drawers, but one of them has to be one I'm looking for. He turned on all the lights in the room and started to search for that drawer that could not open. Night had fallen and the residential area was freakishly quiet, like none of the rooms were occupied. 
One hour passed without Chingu noticing. Chingu sat in the living room, looking at the drawers that had been pulled out. All of the drawers in this place can be opened. There's nothing out of the ordinary with them. Leaning against the sofa, Chingu felt drowsy. He had not had a good rest in a long time already. This is different from my previous draws at the wheel. Is it because the specter is particularly powerful? Or does it have a special power? He placed the recorder beside him and fell asleep on the sofa, hugging the hammer. He was about to close his eyes when his phone rang. The real estate company? Why are they calling? Chingu answered the call, and it was the familiar female voice. Hello, I'm sorry but I just received the news that the agent responsible for third hospital staff residence just ran into an accident while he was on his way to find you. He's currently unavailable to provide his service. If you're still interested in that room, please come back in three days. Car accident. Chingu lost his desire to sleep instantly. The agent had gotten into an accident, so who was the man who had shown him the room? A baleful specter that haunted the residential area or the agent's soul? Either way, the result was the same. He had met a ghost. Can you describe the appearance of the agent? I'm sorry, but I'm only responsible for customer service. I'm not really familiar with the individual agents in Jiujian. You're not familiar with your own company's employees? Chingu looked at the key in his hand. This key had been left behind by the soul. The more he looked at it, the more off he felt about it. The tape was new, but the key old. He pulled the tape back, and there were three crooked numbers written underneath, 305. The room that the man tried to recommend me earlier was the real 304. The one that he wanted me to buy is the real haunted room. Shinji's lack of rationality surprised the man. Normally, people would avoid haunted places, but that customer was the complete opposite and was adamant about entering the haunted room. I'm sorry, is there anything else I can help you with? The woman on the phone was very nice, and her tone was polite. Since you're with the agency, you should have the information on the house, right? Can you help me check the information on the former tenants of room 304? I know it's haunted, but I'm interested in it because the price is low, so there's no need to hide anything from me. Okay. The agent answered quickly. There were three former tenants in room 304. The third tenant was a gambler, and the loan sharks chopped one of his arms off because he didn't have the money to pay his debt. In the end, he was cornered and jumped off the building. The second tenant was an English teacher who mysteriously disappeared in the house. The first tenant. Chingu focused on the phone when there was a knock on the door. Someone is outside? At this time? Chingu grabbed the hammer and muttered into the phone. Please snap a picture of that information and send it to me. I'm definitely taking this place. My house of horrors. Chapter 297 Are you a ghost? Chinga hung up the phone and gripped the doorknob. With his right hand on the hammer, his left hand pulled the door open a sliver. The light filtered into the corridor, and a simple door seemed to split the world in two. Who are you looking for? There was a thin, lanky man standing at the door. His eyes were sunken, and his skin looked rough. He seemed tired. I came to give you a warning. The man kept a fair distance from the door. Don't stay here overnight. If you have to stay within this residential area, do not stay on this floor. Why? Chingu wanted to hear what this strange man had to say. Don't mind why. Just don't stay here overnight. He coughed twice and pulled his hand out of his right pocket to put over his mouth like he did not want people to hear him. He whispered. Someone went missing on this floor before. Went missing? Chingu was reminded of the information given to him by the agent. The second tenant was an English teacher and mysteriously disappeared inside the room. Leave while you still can. The man appeared like he had come to warn Chingu out of kindness. How do you know about all this? Are you also a tenant here? Chingu exposed half of his body while he kept his hand that held the hammer behind the door. Yes, I live upstairs, and I overheard your conversation with yourself earlier. The man was wearing a dusty jacket and kept both his hands in the pockets. He looked physically weak and teetered unstably. I thought you'd leave in the end, but you ran into the room. You look like you're planning to stay overnight, so I came to warn you. Conversation with myself? 
Chinga gulped. Other people would have started to panic by now. Have similar events happened at this building before? Yes, but normally people come during broad daylight. This is the first time someone has visited at night. What happened to those people? Some went mad, and others stayed as tenants. Then again, I'd say those that went mad got lucky. After all, the tenants either committed suicide or disappeared. Went mad? Disappeared? Why are the endings so different? There's apparently a reason. The man signaled for Chingu to come closer with his right hand, but Chingu did not follow his order. In the end, the man had to lean closer to Chingu to whisper. I heard that those who went mad found this place through the actual agent, while those that stayed as tenants called the ghost agent's number. Ghost agent? Chingu was reminded of the girl's voice who remained the same throughout their conversation, the only defining feature about her voice being the politeness. What is a ghost agent? This story began several years ago. There was a murder in this room 304 next to you. The victim was a real estate agent, but even now, the murderer hasn't been caught. The man took in a deep breath and turned his attention upstairs. Other than Chin Ji's room, every corner was shrouded in darkness, so Chin Gu had no idea what he was looking at. After checking their surroundings, the man continued. Ever since his death, this room has been vacant, but weird things kept happening. People would come to see the room, but when asked where they got the information, their answers would be different. Some said they saw it online, others said roadside advertisement, but some of them could not even remember how the information got into their mind. The man paused while he looked at Chingu with confusion. By the way, how did you find out about this place? And how did you get the key to the room next to room 304? The process is rather complicated. Chingu glanced at room 304. I saw the phone number left on the door and called it. Then a man about 30 wearing a black shirt gave me the key. About 30? Black shirt? The man mumbled before his eyes widened. He's returned. After saying that, the man rushed upstairs like he was running for his life. Hey! Finish your story. The man was too suspicious, and Chingu did not intend to let him slip away. He grabbed the hammer and chased after the man. It was unclear whether the man saw the hammer or just focused on running upstairs. The building was old, and it only had eight floors. When Chingu chased the man until the fifth floor, Chin Ji's phone started to ring. Stop! Chingu did not allow himself to get distracted. He rushed until the sixth floor when he finally caught up to the thin man. Why did you run? The agent was 30 plus. When he died, the white formal shirt that he was wearing was dyed black by blood. The man was panicking, and the fact that Chingu was holding a scary looking hammer did not help. It's like I thought. Looks like the agent I saw was the first tenant. Now the issue is whether the female agent is same or not. Chin Ji's phone was still ringing, and he pulled it out. The thin man leaned against the railing like he did not want to be close to Chin Gu. The screen unlocked, and it was the information sent by the agent. The first picture recorded the information on the third tenant, the gambler. Chin Gu swiped the screen to the bottom, and the agent was nice enough to include the gambler's picture. Tired looking, sunken eyes, and slight of frame. When he saw the picture, Chin Ji's body moved faster than his mind. He picked up the hammer and swung at the railing. When he saw the thin man, Chin Gu already had this speculation. No matter what the man did, he only used his right hand and kept his left hand in his pocket. At the time, Chin Gu had suspected that this man had no left hand. The hammer smashed the railing and the thin man evaded to the side as his body twisted in unnatural angle. He did not fight back. With a weird smile on his face, he jumped over the railing and disappeared to the third floor. He's probably run back to room 304. When Chingo left the room, he did not take the recorder with him. To prevent further accident, he decided to return to the third floor first. Chingu felt better when he was inside room 305, and he turned on the recorder. This building sure is interesting. Everyone looks like they're telling the truth, but everyone is lying. I can't trust anyone. Chingu thought back to his conversation with the thin man. The gambler kept persuading me to leave. Why is that? After picking up all his stuff, Chingu took out his phone and looked at the screen. 
The agent only gave me the information on the gambler but not the other two tenants. Did she do that on purpose? What is the connection between these people to the drawer? Chinka shook his head. Looks like the baleful specter I've won this time is rather unique. He called the agent's number. He held the hammer in one hand, and his other held his phone to his ear. Good evening, the information has been sent to your phone. How can I help you? The voice on the phone was still very polite, but the time was already close to midnight. Yes, I still have one last question to ask. Please go ahead. I'm sorry, but are you a ghost? My House of Horrors Chapter 298 Videotape Shinji's directness surprised the lady on the phone. She did not expect a question like that. Are you a ghost? Chinga repeated the question, and he sounded easy on the phone, like he was asking if a friend had eaten dinner yet. The woman's breathing turned urgent, and she felt weirdly agitated. The line started to break up, and the signal suddenly worsened. I'll take that as a silent admission. Chinga leaned against the door with his phone on his ear. He looked like he was chatting with an old friend. I... The woman wanted to say something but eventually held back. She could not understand how Chingu managed to make a ghost feel uncomfortable. Shouldn't a person's first reaction be screaming as the phone drops from their hands when they realize they are conversing with a ghost? Even if you don't do that, at least end the call with shaking fingers. Why aren't you doing that but instead asking those questions? The call was abruptly ended. Hearing the dial tone, Chingu was not surprised. Looks like she was angered after her lie was exposed. He pocketed the phone and stood in the darkened corridor. There are three tenants that found their tragic end inside room 304. I've met the gambler and the agent, so the woman on the phone is probably the second tenant, the English teacher. It was not yet midnight, and Chin Ge had already met three different ghosts. He felt this was only the beginning. I wonder what kind of weird creature I'll meet after midnight. Looks like I need to be prepared. Chingu grabbed his backpack and headed for room 304. Instead of waiting for them to come to me, I should be more active. The light from room 305 fell into the dark corridor. In third hospital staff residence, only Chinji's room had the light on. Most of the tenants live in the two buildings in front. Looks like this block is a no-go zone for them. Chingu grabbed the lock to room 304. He shook on it twice, and it broke off. Perhaps due to the many murders, the police had broken down the lock many times, so there were obvious signs of tempering on the edge of the lock. Breaking down the door is too rude and not something I like to do, but there's no better option now. Chingu made his aim and swung at the door. Bang! Bang! Several hits later, the lock yielded under Chingu's assault. Chingu fitted the handle of the hammer into the open sliver and pried the door open. No one came to stop me even though the commotion was so loud. Looks like the ghosts here have left quite an impression on the nearby tenants. After turning on the light in the living room, Chingu realized how weird room 304 was. The furniture, like the sofa and dining table, was all normal, but everything that could be opened like drawers and dressers were all sealed up with wooden planks. Now this looks like a haunted house. Perhaps due to the old wiring, the light kept flickering and it made one uneasy. Walking to stand in the middle of the room, Chingu touched the back of the sofa. The place had been vacant for a long time, but there was no dust. It was as if there were daily cleaners. Two bedrooms and one living room. The layout is similar to room 305, but the stuff is much older. Chingu walked to the shoe rack. Looking at the nails on the boards, he was curious. Why are all the racks and drawers sealed? Are they hiding something scary? With a swing of his hammer, the shoe rack was opened. It was holding several pairs of shoes, nothing interesting about them. Were these left behind by the victims? Slippers, high heels, and boots were shoved inside the rack. Chingu tossed the shoes out, and he was surprised to find out they had all been slashed through with a knife. Knife marks? Who did this? Chingu could not find anything on the shoes, so he looked elsewhere. The living room was small, and across from the sofa was a television cabinet. Interestingly enough, even the drawers under the television were sealed up by planks. The thing that I want is called the drawer that cannot be opened. Does this mean, after I try all the drawers, the one that cannot be opened is mine? 
No one could give Chengu an answer, so he could only try it out himself. Due to the positioning of the cabinet, Chengu took some time before he managed to pry the planks off. He pulled open the drawer, and videotapes that were kept inside black boxes fell out. Videotapes? How old are these? He found a rather new-looking one from the bunch and slotted it into the videotape player situated under the television. He plugged the machine in and switched it on. As the television came on, a shadow flashed across the screen. Was that a shadow? Something just ran past me? Chingu stayed on high alert. He knew the gambler who had lost his left hand had run into room 304, and he was hiding in one of the corners. The videotapes were from many years ago, and the quality was bad. Adding to the problem was the television. It was filled with white pixels and stripes. Then again, the fact that the antique was working was already a miracle. Chingu ignored the details and squatted down before the television to watch the video. The video was showing the image of the room. The video was still, so the person who recorded it had probably fixed the camera to a certain corner. What is he trying to record? After one minute, the video had not changed. Chen Gu was getting impatient, he used the remote to fast forward. The first half of the video was normal, but the latter half was weird. The latter half was shot at night, and the video looked similar to what Chen Gu was experiencing in real life. The light was on in the room, and the camera was placed on top of the television. The camera was facing the living room, so the angle included the entire living room and the two bedrooms. The whole drawer is filled with videotapes, meaning the person recording them has been recording this home for a long time already. Chen Gu could venture a guess at the person's intention. They had probably experienced something supernatural, and to prove the point, they wanted to use the video camera to record everything. Didn't they know curiosity killed the cat? He should have moved when he noticed something is wrong with the place. Chen Gu hugged the recorder to his chest and continued watching the video. The video quality was horrible. When Chingu reached the end of the video, the image that remained the same suddenly changed. The lights in the video, like in reality, started to flicker, and after each flicker, the closed bedroom door in the video opened little by little. My House of Horrors Chapter 299 Bunch of Actors The camera was placed on top of the television, meaning the video on screen was the image that Chingu would see if he turned around. With the flickering light, Squatting before the television, Chen Gu felt as if he was not looking at a recorded video but what was happening behind him. The lights continued to flicker, and the flickering in real life started to match the tempo of the flicking in the video. When the light dimmed in the video, it also did in reality. Then, the light came back at the same time. The video is influencing reality? No, the ghosts are playing tricks on me. Chingu did not turn around but kept his focus on the bedroom door and the video that was slowly opening. Whenever the light turned down, the door would open several centimeters. When the light flickered for the seventh time, Chingu saw a head of black hair poking out from behind the door. The hair is long, should be a woman. Could she be the second tenant? Chingu still did not turn around, but his grip on the hammer did tighten. When the light flickered for the eighth time, the hair swayed in the wind and half an exposed face reached out into the living room. Chingu stared at the face in the video, and he counted silently. The time between each flicker seemed to be constant. When the face in the video was about to show itself, the light in the video and in reality suddenly shut off at the same time. Suin! Chingu reacted in seconds and swung the hammer behind him. The hammer landed on the soft cushion, and Chingu looked around him. The room was dark, and something seemed to be moving. Several seconds later, the light came back on. Nothing changed in the living room in reality, but the bedroom door was open, just like the one in the video. Chingu turned back to look at the television. The screen was white, the video had ended. Kicking the sofa aside, Chingu looked at the slowly turning tape. When Su Yin's voice returned, he moved toward the bedroom slowly. The wooden door was half open, and there were several strands of long hair on the floor. Chingu picked them up and rubbed them between his hands. If you are intent on trying my patience like this, I might just torch the whole place down. Walking into the bedroom, Chingu was greeted by a mess. Various trash littered the ground, and there were wooden planks on the dresser. Even the bedside table was sealed up. Everything that can be opened is sealed up. 
What is this furniture hiding? Which tenant left the videotapes behind? Looking at the sealed furniture, an idea appeared in Shinji's mind. Did the tenant find the reason of the haunting from the videotapes, so he closed up all the drawers and dressers? The more he thought about it, the more convinced he became. The tenant probably saw the ghost crawl out from a piece of furniture, and to prevent that from happening again, they sealed up all the furniture that could be opened. Shingu stood in the middle of the bedroom, and he thought of another problem. Counting that female ghost, I've met three ghosts already. All of them can move through the room freely, meaning sealing up the furniture was pointless. This means that the tenant probably missed the drawer, and this drawer is probably the one I'm looking for. He placed Xiao Xiao on the bedroom door to act as a lookout, and he used the hammer pry open all the drawers and dressers. All the furniture is sealed tight. Could the drawer be in the other bedroom? Xiao Xiao collapsed onto the ground like she was trying to crawl out. When Xin Gu picked her up, he realized her hand was pointing outside of room 304. Initially, he did not pay it much attention, but when he passed the living room, he glanced out the door accidentally. The doors to both room 304 and 305 were not closed, and in the middle of the two rooms stood an old woman with a hunched back. The old lady did not say anything as she faced room 304. The wrinkles on her face were like tree rings, she looked quite scary. Chin Gu stood where he was and unconsciously moved the hammer to hide behind him. Elder, are you a tenant here? Chin Gu kept his voice calm and collected. The old lady did not answer Chin Gu. She was not even looking at Chingu but at the drawers that Chingu had pried open with force. It's getting late. Elder, your family will be worried about you if you don't return home. An old lady standing quietly in the dark, there had to be something weird about her. If this was someone younger, Chingu would not have hesitated to reward them with a hammer to the face. Was it you who opened these drawers? The lady's voice was hoarse. It sounded like tree bark grinding against each other. Yes, I plan to buy these two rooms, and now I'm arranging the furniture. Chingu kept his gaze on the old lady. If she did anything suspicious, he would summon Suin. You'd better leave immediately. Find a good doctor to look at you, perhaps you've been haunted by her already. The old lady gave Chingu this advice before turning to walk away. She moved slowly, her footsteps wobbly. Haunted by her? What do you mean? Chingu followed her to the stairs. The old lady pointed at room 304. Before this, an English teacher stayed in that room. She was very pretty and had a sweet voice. In the end, she was killed by her lover. She was chopped into pieces and hidden inside the drawers. She was discovered a long time after her death, so she bore great resentment. She haunts everyone who lives here. English teacher? Chinga realized that the old lady's story matched what he knew. She probably was not lying, but the problem was, why would an old lady stand outside the door in the middle of the night? Elder, why would you tell me all this? Chingu stood under the light and did not follow her down the stairs. He asked, Can you tell me how you know these things? I live in the next building. The English teacher was my daughter. The old woman's face fell, and even her tone turned sad. You're the third one. She has done many bad things, and I don't want her to do it anymore. Leave, don't stay in that room any longer. The old woman continued down the stairs. She walked slowly like she was waiting for Chingu to catch up. But I still have a question. Chingu was about to ask who the other two victims were when he received a message on his phone. It was from the female agent. Do you know why the tenants at that residential area don't dare make any noise and turn off their lights so early at night? There's an old lady haunting the place and she tries to find her way home by following the light and noise. After reading the message, Chingu raised his head. The old woman stood at the corner of the stairwell. The wrinkles on her face were folded together, and she said in a creepy voice, Come with me. That room is very dangerous. Chinji's gaze flitted between the phone and the old lady. Chingu suddenly dropped his backpack as a story slowly formed in his mind. None can be trusted but there's no need for me to trust anyone. He summoned Su Yin and tightened his grip around the hammer. I'm just here to retrieve the thing that I've won. I'm really not interested in your stories. My House of Horrors Chapter 300 The Artist Su Yin slowly climbed out from behind Chingu, 
and the pair rushed toward the old lady in unison. The wrinkles on her face folded together. When the old lady saw Chen Gu exit room 304 and enter the shadow, her dry lips curved into a smile. However, before she could do anything, a man wearing a half-red shirt suddenly rushed at her. So painful! The wounds on his body oozed blood, and the man landed on all fours like he was some feral animal. The smile froze on the old lady's face, and with a speed that did not match her age, she morphed into a shadow and escaped down the stairs. Didn't you ask me to follow you? The hammer landed heavily at the spot where the old lady had stood a moment ago, and the sound echoed throughout the building. None of you are escaping me tonight! Suin and Chingu gave chase after the old lady. The stairwell was filled with the sound of rushing footsteps. The steps were like endless, and this was the first time the old lady had felt that the stairwell was so long. This was probably the scariest night she had ever experienced. The exit was just before her. The shadow ran with all her energy. She was just a normal lingering spirit. Her soul was lost when she saw Su Yin with half a red shirt. Stand right there, Chingu called after her. Su Yin was slightly faster than the shadow. Just as the shadow was about to escape, he managed to grab its arm. The shadow shuddered, and without hesitation, it tore its arm off and rushed out of the building, disappearing into the darkness. Looks like I need more training. I was running too slow. Chen Gu sighed with regret. When he turned to look at Su Yin, he realized that the broken arm had already disappeared, and the blood stain on Su Yin's shirt seemed to have grown. Perhaps it won't be a terrible thing if Su Yin becomes a red specter. Chen Gu looked down at the dark residential area. Since we've met, I can't just sit idle. After I find the drawer, I'll come back to deal with the old lady's lingering wish. Calling Su Yin, Chen Gu returned to the third floor. He called the agent's number. The call was not answered, so Chen Gu messaged the number asking for a reply. He wanted to thank the agent in person for her reminder. Why isn't she taking my call? Chen Gu held the phone in his left hand and dragged the hammer back into room 304 with his right. I've inspected the living room and the bedroom closest to the door. The only remaining room is the deepest bedroom. These spirits have been trying to stop me from going there. The last room was locked from within, but this was solved by a swing of the hammer. The bedroom is locked from the inside. Does this mean the gambler's missing arm is inside? Chingu cracked the door open and finally gained entry to the last room. The bedroom was tiny. A large bookshelf and a desk took up half of the space, and the remaining half was occupied by a rusted mini-fridge and a tattered sleeping mat. The edges of the mat are frayed. Looks like the owner used this mat often, but there's a bed in the other bedroom, right? Why did he insist on staying in this room? Was he afraid of something? The atmosphere in this room was totally different from outside. There was no chill in the air, and the drawers and shelves were not sealed up with wooden planks. The working table and shelf are perfectly clean. They look like they've been cleaned daily. Chingu looked at the tidy bookshelf, and a weird thought appeared in his mind. Feels like it's the lingering spirits that help with the cleaning. Does this mean the spirits here have an obsession with cleanliness? The bookshelf had literature related to drawing comics. How to draw a famous comic series, how to create an exciting world, an understanding of human anatomy. These books don't seem to fit the previous tenant's identities, so has this place played host to a fourth tenant? Chingu replaced the books and found a box of abandoned drafts under the bookshelf. The weirdest thing was the drafts had signs that they had been crumbled, and some had been torn apart, but someone had gruelingly pieced them back together with tape. Why are all the drafts preserved? Chingu picked up the thick stack and started to read. The characters drawn were off. It was obvious that the artist had tried to make the characters look cuter and more mainstream, but the effect was just scarring. The artist was definitely not a professional. The characters did not have vibrant expressions and in fact, a few of them had blank eyes, some of them were frozen in fear. However, it was observable that the artist had been trying to improve, to fit the taste of the public, but something was different about his eye for beauty. Even if he was mimicking other people's work, he managed to draw the famous comic book character like a female dead body. It's a kind of talent to be able to draw every picture as scary as these. Chingu placed the drafts down and saw a thin notebook with a yellow cover at the back of the shelf. He flipped through it, 
and realized that it was a budget book. It recorded the artist's weekly expenses and what he earned from selling his script. Reading the content, Jin Ji's face slowly creased into a frown. Technically speaking, the comic artist was also a tenant at room 304, but he shared it with someone else, and the place he rented was this small bedroom. He had a hard life. He was a comic book lover, but looking through the notebook, for the three years the artist stayed in the room, the income he gained from drawing was a measly 1,200. The 1,000 was sponsored by the old landlady or his only fans, and the other 200 was the payment he got when he moved under the bridge to do people's portraits. In the end, he drew the living people like a dead man, and he was chased by the angry customer for several blocks. After the police came to intervene, the person gave him 200 as compensation. He powered on with his passion and love. He kept his monthly expenses to under 400, and his belief held firm, one day, he would succeed. However, the cruel reality was, even until his final day, his work did not find any appreciation. The last page of the notebook was a folded newspaper. One of the articles was on a middle-aged man who sacrificed himself to save a drowning boy. The article did not mention the man's name. This is different from the other spirits. Just how many tenants room 304 has had? Chingu replaced the notebook and walked to the desk. It's facing away from the living room. This should be the table mentioned in the black phone. The table was filled with a lot of drawing equipment like it was waiting for its owner to return. Chingu scanned the desk, and he saw the three drawers that came with it. He pulled open the first drawer, and it was filled with drawing pencils and pens. This isn't it. Chingu pulled the second drawer open. It was filled with the rejection letters that the middle-aged man had received. They were almost overflowing out of the drawer. Then Chingu tried the third drawer. He gave it a powerful yank, but the drawer remained unmoved. Please subscribe to A7 English Podcasts and enjoy listening every day with us. Thank you.